Okay. Hey guys, Facebook friends around the world, how are you? I'm gonna wait for everyone to come on because I think we have, I thought I would do something unique and special tonight um, that everybody might be interested in because I'm always interested in Somalia and what's happening in our country and what's happening with Turkey. So we'll wait for people to come on in a few minutes, but I thought it would be interesting to have a live conversation on Facebook with none other than someone who I feel like has a lot of experience, especially when it comes to uh, Somalia and the old days and good old days of Somalia and that is my father so I want to introduce you guys to my dad who is here actually with us in Toronto and I couldn't ask for a better moment than to share this moment and uh, talk about Somalia and our country hi dad how are you good thank you Alan how are you yourself should we talk enough Somali or English uh, Somali is okay English is okay Oh, Arabic, because you speak Arabic too. Uh, and I can speak Arabic too. So, guys, I posted a few weeks ago a story about my dad and how my father um, was in the former Somali government um, back in the 80s. And my dad was the governor of uh, Galgudud, the Samarab. Yeah, dad? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. I always get it wrong. Galgudud. Yeah. Yeah. Galgudud. Gal 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 okay. Well, that time. So d my dad was in the former government and um, always wanted to like know interesting questions about what happened um, in Somalia while you were there, dad. And probably one of the few people who was closest to what was happening at that time, right? Oh, yeah. So do you want to share anything about back home? What did you, what was your lessons learned in the old Somalia government? Well, the Somali people is one people, one nation, one language, one culture. There's no difference whatsoever among the people. The only thing is this, they have to have a regime or a system where they, which is democratic and it should be fair to everybody and all people are equal and democratically elected government has to be there. MashaAllah. So do you think that's what's happening now in our country? That, that's why we're kind of like feeling... Well, Are we going to have an election, Dad? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. We can never give up on this issue. But the only solution to Somalia uh, problems is to have an elected government democratically elected government and to reinstitute again the national constitution of the 1960s which was democratically equal and good for everybody so in your experience daddy i know you worked closely with siad but obviously um the old former president of somalia what do you think was the lesson that was learned from that regime well the, the, i mean a Somali society is a society of nomads and they believe in democratic system. Any problem they have, they sit together, discuss the problem and solve it in an equal, on the basis of that they are equal and they have to resolve the issues that are there. And they do it democratically. And in some cases, they do, uh, uh, what do you call it, voting system within the tribe itself. And this is part of the Somali culture. It's, it's very, I mean, nobody decides completely that the tribe will do this. For instance, some tribes have sultans, some tribes have kings, some tribes have garads, aqal. Mm -hmm. But these, all these people comes under the leadership or the, uh, 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 under the leadership of tri tribe groups mm -hmm. who are finally the final decision of anything that is required to make a decision on. So then we shouldn't shy away from tribalism, is that what you're saying? I think we should not shy from tribalism. Tribalism is not the main thing. Mm -hmm. The issue is this. We have a national issue. We, have one, we are one culture, one nation, one culture, one religion. We don't have any differences in the Somali society. It's different than many African countries we are. We have one nation, one culture, 
one language. And this gives us a unique uh, situation in Africa. We I know some people are asking, uh, some people are asking why you're speaking English. And I think one of the reasons is for the fact that we have a lot of younger generation Somalis that never even heard the history of what happened in Somalia. And I think one of the things that I want to have alive with you is that um, if we can maybe have Somalia, people, might, you guys are welcome to ask questions. He's open to answering questions. So um, we can like take some questions from the audience. Um, somebody wants to know, does he think that the elder generation, including, um, do you think that you could have done more to save the country, Dad? Well, it, it could be. There's no doubt if there is a chance that you can express your opinion properly, you, you, you can save the country by, for instance, by saying your opinion, and at the same time, by reinstituting, reinstating again the democratic system that was there in the country, mm -hmm. where people can express their opinion, they express their, 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 the people that they want to represent them, to elect the people that they want to represent them, and this, 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 this can be reinstated again. Yeah. So this, we're live, guys, and then we're outside, sitting outside my house. Yeah. But, um, Dad, so you had the experience of, you know, you were a youth leader in Yemen, and you came back to Somalia to yeah. basically have hope and rebuild your nation. Um, why do you think that when you came back, did you feel like it was worth it? It's worth it because. Uh, in Yemen, I was born there, I was raised there, but at the same time, I didn't feel that I belonged to there. I am, I was feeling that I'm a Somalia, mm -hmm. and I need to go to my country of ancestors. Yes. And I went there, and I succeeded, and I worked through the system, and I managed mm -hmm. to get yeah. into the system. So yeah. So when, when you got into the system, you started working your way up to the country and working, you worked in Hargeisa, you worked in the World Food Program, and then basically you got into the government. Um, what, did you, what did you find when you worked in Dusamreb? What happened? Like, tell us about your experience when you became a governor. Well, in Somalia has um, an issue of clanism, not tribalism. We are one nation, one people, one language, one culture. We, we don't have different tribes to speak different language. We speak one language, one culture, one religion. The issue we need is this. As a clan, we're supposed to be united as people. And, every, and all of us should continue to be equal yes. in all aspects. And the government should treat us all as equal people. So when you went back and you were working in Dusamareb, like obviously you're from a different clan than the people that live in that city. Was that like the norm like back then? Well, it was normal. And uh, we tried to adopt what, it's, what the revolution has announced. Is this no tribalism? And all people are equal. And I tried to implement that. Mm -hmm. But because of the war that we went with Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Siad Barre has changed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he has adopted other thinkings. Mm -hmm. And he started to go back on some of the issues that he has already announced before. Mm -hmm. Anti-tribalism. And he started to go back to this issue. And then... Because of the Somalia, some parts of the Somali Salvation Democratic Party, Salvation, Sal Somalia Salvation Democratic Front mm -hmm. of SSDF, mm -hmm. started to have to wage a war from Ethiopia mm -hmm. against the regime of Siad Barre. Siad Barre has fought it on a tribal basis. He considered Majertain as a tribe. And he, instead of fighting them as a nation, as a, as, as a president of a nation, he started to fight them as a person 
who has a grudge against another clan. Ah, so okay. So it's interesting that Siabra himself took over the government I and mean, the country as a coup, right? And now Turkey's having the same issues um, with people trying to overtake the government. How do you think? Was it? Did he bring it? Was it karma? The fact that he kind of like got the same experience of being taken over. Well, I hope Turkey will not get into that because Turkey is the issue is higher than what we had in Somalia. Mm -hmm. Turkey is but an was, issue. But was it an issue when the coup was trying to take over the Siapra government? What's your opinion of that? Well, the, I think there is some similarities because the coup now is a military issue. The military is not a solution for the for this this world what we are living in. It's an issues that as result the the main issues in our areas or in our world is democracy. Yes. And, and it's not a coup, a military rule. It's not a rule of a civilian rule. It's a, a rule of a democratic elected government. Right, but where does Siabra go wrong in the government? Well, because you were working he, for him. You were stationed in Dusumareb. Uh, you he, were, you yeah. know, where was the mistakes made that basically collapsed the entire country? Siad Barre has saved the country from a civil war but he overstayed his limitations. He overstayed over 20, close to 20 years mm -hmm. because he became a military dictator. Mm -hmm. And that should not have been. Mm -hmm. He should have allowed the, after the coup mm -hmm. to, to initiate stability into the country and then to make an elected government back to power and the parliament to be reinstated. So what's your opinion of him, Dad? Hmm? I know we're not supposed to talk about dead people, but you know, but what is your opinion of him? Did you think he was a good leader? He was a good leader. He was a very eloquent leader. He was very uh, honest at the beginning, but he lacked the power. He overstayed in the power. This is the only problem he had. Otherwise, he was a nice person as a human being. Mm -hmm. was a nice person. Do you think that he was very loyal to Somalia as a country? I believe so. I believe he was loyal to Somalia and he liked his country. And he has a good experience. So do you think that his history of what happened, obviously, with Hargeisa, that kind of tarnished his entire image? Uh, well, th this is because of the deterioration of his rule and overstays in power has uh, brought that he has to fight against his own people. And this is what has happened to Hargeisa. Bombing of Hargeisa, civilian people that has never done anything, children's, women's, is not fair mm -hmm. under any circumstances. And this is what he did. And this was anger, nothing more, nothing less. So do you think that the country will ever recover from that experience since Siadbra is gone now? And that, that has been the issue that's plaguing an entire nation where people still holding grievance against that time. I believe, the, I believe we can, as a nation, we have good advantage. We are one nation. We speak one language, we have one culture, we have one mode of production. We can resolve our problem and we can go back together as a family. And we are one family, one language, one culture. We have nothing different. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some t clans that don't speak the same language, like of my Maiga and stuff like that, right? Oh, th this is a very v small minority, mm -hmm. but they speak the main language. They do speak Somali, right? Somali. Somali. Yeah. The main Somali language is there. But uh, they are very small minority. Mm -hmm. They have dialects. Everybody has dialects. Every village has a different uh, dialect. And this could happen in everywhere. So how do you, some people are asking questions now, and I'll ask you a few things. Um, somebody asked earlier, what do you think of, um, like, what advice do you have for young people now? Uh, young people, I would say. 
شو بي تاكين صومالي سو دانيرا صومالي تشوكت ما حاو شيك سابي كذا انا قربان كو سو كورني وات قانا انا ود كرا كو سو كورني نبد بان هي سنا بو ود ود دو يو ثينك يور اكسبيرينس داد سينس يو وينت باك از ا يوث ليدر باك تو ذا كونتري ود دو يو تيل يونغ بيبل هو ار ليفينغ ان صوماليا اكسبيرينسينغ اول ذيس هاردشيبس ان بروفيتي ان لاك اوف امبلويمنت ذا وانز باك هوم اوف صومالي بيبل كلها هذا ما حاو شيك ساي يا ابي وحن اورن لها ها الا وين دالكاس ودالكيني ودالكي ابو ياشين ودالكات كاتمادين ها الا وين ودنها كوهيا مسكحنا كوهيا قلبك كوهيا وحي اد اود اد ليدين اد وقبان كرتان او قبطه وحات كبيرين كرتان كبيريه But what about the ones that don't have had they hope lehin ab ما حاو شي جس اكواس How you know how had man to have a case Somalia in Magdusho while open and behind that could Turkey got right. So do you, I just was thinking to myself why couldn't we do that for our own country? What then can open and behind like they can't even like do that for our own like Somali society? Do you think that's what where can where can they get that guts to do stuff like that? Uh, it's well I understand it's unfortunate majority of us has. immigrated we have uh, run away from our country for safety and we became immigrant not only immigrant but refugees in many parts of the world and uh, this has also affected us for quite a while and a big number of us has were born here or born in any uh, outside this country raised outside the country, adopted a culture or subculture, uh, for instance, outside the, outside the normal Somali culture, and this has also affected us. So where is the hope, though, Dad? There is a hope. We can go back and uh, do it again. Mm-hmm. And we should never forget that this is our country. This is our, our one day you will go back or your children will go back. Yeah. Now, what do you tell the old leaders, Abe, like, like your friend, or should I say ex-friend, Silaya? Just kidding. <laughs> I know you guys were friends uh, back in the day. Like uh, all the leaders, the older leaders that are still in power, the Somali MPs. Do you think that they will ever give up power? All Somalis leaders who are now remain in Somalia to lead the nation, I will remind them they have a responsibility. This is their country. They have a responsibility to reunite the country again and to make it democratic and stable again. It is their responsibility. Do you think they will do it, though? I hope so. I am I'm confident majority of them will do it. Because we are a nation of one culture, one language. We have no differences whatsoever. Mm-hmm. If you are in Hargeisa and you go to Magadishu or you go to uh, Baidaba, And or you go to Kismayo, you don't feel any differences. You speak the same language, the same culture, everything is the same. Mm-hmm. Nothing is there. You never feel that you've been out of your of your home. That's true, Abe. We just make different kinds of anchelos, right? Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. We hope so. <laughs> so, Dad, what? Um, anything else you want to add? I will add, never forget, Somalia is one. One nation, one language, one culture. Remember this. We will have to remember it all the time. Oh, Dad. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us, guys. Thank I you. hope that you guys enjoyed an intimate conversation with my Facebook Live. I normally don't get a chance to share a little bit more intimacy on my uh, journalism page, but thank you so much for joining me live. And like my dad says, I always respect him. Um, he sacrificed so much for our country. And uh, I'm grateful that my father is here to share his story with us. And I think all of us young people around the world should take advantage and learn from the elders 
as to how to better ourselves, better our countries, and better a future for all of our children. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care, guys.